Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to take you on a tour of our vegetable garden. For those new to the channel, um, we've, I've had a lot of new followers lately, so welcome. Hi, my name is Corrine. My family and I live in Southern Ontario in Kawartha Lakes, about a zone four, and we grow most of our own food, almost all of our own medicine, and we raise hens. We do all of these things on a half acre. So I like to really tell people my backstory about that because I think there's this idea that if you want to get into the self-sufficient lifestyle, the homesteading lifestyle, that you need to buy the farm. Um, and we certainly didn't buy a farm. <laughs> and uh, we're able to do a lot here, like a lot, a lot, um, in such a small space. So I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to give you a brief tour of our vegetable gardens, give you an idea of what the layout looks like. It's, it's kind of wild, um, as most of our gardens seem to get. When you are, um, when you have smaller space like we do, maybe it's just me, let me know in the comments, but I have this tendency to cram too many things in. Um, and then we learn five years later that, oh, that's how big mature rhubarb gets. Oh goodness, that's how big the elderberries are gonna get. And so we're kind of learning from our own trial and error and our own mistakes and figuring out what's worked and what's not working and slowly shifting and changing the gardens as we do. But as I said, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna turn the camera around and give you a tour. Why, hello there, my fellow self-sufficiency seeker. Did you know that in addition to running Spirea Herbs, my membership platform, and doing all the things I do, that I also write for a magazine called My Grounded Home. This was a passion project launched by myself and my good friend Caitlin Scott because we really wanted to take the overwhelm out of this self-sufficiency lifestyle and the homesteading journey that many of us want to embark on. So if you are brand new to homesteading but you're not quite sure where to start, I encourage you head down to my description under freebies. You can grab the first issue of My Grounded Home that we launched completely for free and you can check it out and see if it's for you. I imagine it would help you on your journey Honestly, it's something that I wish I had had access to when I first started out. So like I said, head down to that description, click and grab your free copy of the first issue of My Grounded Home. And of course, let me know what you think. So there's the main entrance to our garden. We've got a little arbor there. And yesterday my husband and I worked our butts off and really cleared out this area and put cardboard down and mulched because we have at least two different species of invasive thistle here <laughs> and it was overtaking all of this. And so I just wanted to show off our handiwork, like if I'm gonna be honest. This is essentially, okay, you see this side? See that? Versus this. That. This, as you can see, we haven't done this side yet. So when you enter, we have a circular pollinator garden, which we may have put too many plants in. So live and learn. Um, we will move some of these next year. But these are all perennials that help to attract pollinators. What's the best way to come at this? So I think maybe this angle actually would be better. So the center of our garden has this really cool rock that we call spirit rock. And then we have garden boxes going north, south, east, west from there. So if I start in the middle, east and west are our garlic, which looks like it's gonna be ready to pull soon. And then north and south are our sweet potato beds, which are actually doing pretty well. We're really happy. They they looked like they weren't going to do so good and then they kind of bounce back but that seems to be sweet potatoes for us and then on all of the um, corners we have essentially two garden boxes might be hard to see and then a frame trellises that connect to them this one might be a little easier to see so again there's two garden boxes and these a frame trellises now these ones we built 
Um, that wood is over five years old and it's holding up. You know, everyone told us you want to get the pressure treated and we didn't um, because the pressure treated was like three times the cost and the trellises are doing just fine. So we have four of these set up. So in the main part of the garden, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 12 wooden garden boxes that are all four by eights. And so here's an example of what we have in some of them. This one, we've got our peas which are flowering, but also coming in. So we'll be nibbling on those very, very soon. And here is where we have all of our eggplants and some onions. Over here, we've got peppers and basil. And we've planted onion sets all around the edge. And then of course, we've got some tomatoes. The bed that is on the other side of this one has our pickling cucumbers and our row cover protecting our precious cabbages. These guys are our asparagus. So on the end of every one of these beds that's north, south, east, west, we planted some perennial garden beds. And I'll walk around and show you what I mean by this. So this was where our perennial food sources were going to be. And after five years, we're learning that it's not quite turning out the way that we had hoped, mostly because these perennial beds were planted in the really poor soil that we have here that I mentioned was loaded with thistles and all sorts of things. So on the edge of each one is a rhubarb. Inside we have, um, I believe they're alpine strawberries, which are an ever-bearing strawberry, not doing as well as I had hoped, and then our asparagus. And of course, when you don't harvest all your asparagus, what do you end up with? right? What looks like tons and tons of ferns. What I am really happy with, and there's some better ones over on this bed. So this mirrors too, and we're thinking of shifting and changing this next year as well, and trying to make these pathways a bit wider. But these are Egyptian walking onions, and I'm going to do a whole other video on these, on harvesting them, and um, how to get, you know, get your crop ready for next year as well, because they are a perennial onion. But how nifty are these guys? This bed seems to be doing better. As you can see, there's lots of strawberries in there for us to pick. So these ones are doing a little better, but again, just keeping up with the weeds has been really, really difficult because our soil here is not so fabulous. Now these are a new addition. If you watched my video on the Sprout Box aluminum garden boxes, these ones are the ones that we put in this year. So there's three of them over here with that same A-frame trellis. Uh, we're really happy with this product. We just need to get stone so we can finish up our pathways. But I'll come and film it from this side. Here are our two potato towers. One of them is doing really well. The other one is just a little slow, but we planted this one, the second one here, much, much later. Over here is stuff we didn't put away. <laughs> and then our hascaps, which are still pretty young, so we don't have a lot coming in yet in that neighborhood. But if you see it from the other side here, here are our metal garden boxes. And this is where we have, we've got um, some tomatoes and winter squash. We have a mixture of beans and some winter squash, summer squash, and some cucumbers. And then over here we have more summer squash. So it's kind of just a mixed bag. Right now what we're really dealing with, and you can see it, look at this. Our big challenge right now are cucumber beetles and we're trying to stay on top of it. We've been using neem oil. We've been coming out early in the morning and squishing them. See, so look at them. Do you see them? Let's see, will the camera let me show them to you? These little guys, right there. Oh, they moved, little jerks. They're eating everything. So we've also put up yellow sticky um, traps as well to try to catch some of them because they are decimating my poor cucumbers. But this tomato, look, these guys, I'll be eating these ones soon. So they'll be much happier. So yeah, we have a lot going on over here as well. And this insanity is my raspberry patch. <laughs> and I call it insanity because, you know, like, again, if you're new to my channel, my husband and I did not grow up with this lifestyle. We're not farmers. Um, furthest from farmers that you could probably be. We both grew up in the suburbs. Um, my parents didn't even really have a vegetable garden. My husband's maybe had a small one, but it certainly wasn't to the extent that we're doing it. And nor was it like, this is feeding our family. And so there's a lot of things that we learn on the fly 
and thinning out the insanity that is my raspberries is one of the things that we're learning that we're really going to have to do. And so, but I share these stories because I want homesteading and vegetable gardening and self-sufficiency to be accessible to everyone and not to be so intimidating. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm not a master gardener. I didn't go to school for any of this. Um, I still have to Google what to do when you have cucumber beetles. Not anymore because we get them every year, but when I first got them. And so I, I want to share that because I think it's important that you know, a lot of the homesteaders that we follow on YouTube and on social media platforms that are real influencers, they were raised in farming families. They've got lots of kids that help them out. Maybe you and your partner both work and you don't have a lot of time. You know, I've got, um, I run a herbal clinic. I run a um, education membership platform. If people want to learn about herbal medicine, my husband works full time. We're busy. And so, um, if we can do this, you know, with the background that we have, which was again, not really uh, knowing how to do any of this and learning it all from scratch, then anyone can. So if you have any questions about our garden and the layout and what we're growing this year, what's working, what's not working, please leave that in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and also checking out my email newsletter. Uh, there's links in the description where you can join that. And I also have freebies down there, guys, so you can grab, uh, I believe there's a free herbal skincare guide and a tincture guide that you can grab as well. So that's it for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.